A Mercury Star Runner has some very interesting relay placement that you need to know about. And also, is it a sign of things to come? Thank you to my long-term subscribers for sticking around. Now, the MSR, rumored to have relays that were underneath the floor, turned out they are underneath the floor, inside the crawl spaces. There is two different relay positions underneath the crawl spaces that are not right next to each other either. They're in different spots in the space. They're not that hard to get to. There's a couple different ways to drop down. There's the sneaky ramp that nobody knows about, of course, at the back <laughs> uh, that is close to one. And then the drop down in the rec room or the scanning room, uh, e either one of those will get you to the other one. And then if once you are in there, you can pop open the engineering space door and leave that open to get to that said second relay if you don't want to play chutes and ladders as much. And it also opens it up to the engineering space, which has an yet another relay station. But it brings up an interesting point. To have the use of multi-crew or a solo player that really, really, really needs to get around, CIG has placed these relays in different parts of different ships. The MSR happened to have those chutes and ladders underneath, as I adorably call them. However, it created a accidental nerf to the MSR when compared to its other ships. When I took a look at the relays in the brand new Zeus MR and the Zeus CL, they are extremely easy access because there's only so many places you can go hide a relay. And it's extremely convenient to just run over and pop open a panel and bam, it's in. But with the MSR, it's a double-decker ship with extremely limited access to the lower level. And then when you're in that lower level, you're running around crouched in a difficult place for those who use third-person camera view. So there's, there's a few different things to unpack there, but this is a, I believe, unintentional nerf for the cool factor. It is a cool idea to go into the bowels of the ship and be able to actually replace relays, and uh, I think there's a place for that, but... On a ship that's already live, that's already calibrated for the size it is, and a lot of people run it solo, uh, so this is especially going to hit them hard, or at most, two people up on a ship, them and a friend rolling around having a good time, and that friend is busy running a turret, that friend is busy running the back cargo area, and then also now these engineering requirements. And if that person is not aware of all the different parts of the MSR, they're going to have to be taught where those other relays are, or they're going to have to have some very interesting on-the-job training while you're yelling at them over comms. So I, I feel that the MSR is almost forced is almost forced to make people decide to not use the said ship, and that's a shame because, as I've said in some discussions on the recent Zeus videos uh, in the comment section, the the MSR has a good amount of storage space. Me and some friends have honestly fit three Furies, two straight in and then one on its one sideways, uh, being able to fit in there. You can fit two Ursas in there if you get really creative. Um, things that you cannot do with some of these newer ships, uh, at least reliably, and then also be able to roll them in and roll them out. So all of a sudden, you can have a Nursa and something else. That's a lot of thing in, in a ramped ship, a nice big ramp that's actually practical. But now you're paying for that. And the frustrating part about the MSR is it doesn't even have its data running capacity or its scanners and all their glory yet. So having these relays added kind of just as yet another thing that you have to do to carry this ship around, and it's already got the nickname of being a fat ship and bulked up from its concept, much like the Carrick and others. I'm not saying everybody just picks on that one ship, but it has that said reputation, whereas the Carrick is still adored by the, pop, by the community, even with all the work, because the Carrick brings a lot to the table. You have that beautiful med area. You have a hangar a physical, even if it's just for a Pisces, you have the ability to do more with it, and it's just going to grow and grow over time. The MSR is just promising you to grow and grow over time in, in smaller ways, but at the same time, it's gaining more and more work on a ship of a scale that it's very hard to get a crew for. So there's a lot of little moving parts here. So it's kind of a 
it's kind of unfair for me to give the Karak a pass, but at the same time, the MSR does not get a pass. But I just feel that the Karak does not bring enough value to the table for all the additional work they're asking of it. Especially if these relays can be popped very easily in PvP, PvE environments, or if they just fail over time. As CIG has multiple times said in the past, they are certainly talking about trying to calibrate the amount those fuses will pop here and there, and then kind of go back and go, well, you know, you can have a spare and you can just throw it in. It's not that big of a deal. It, it is a big deal, especially when you shove it into the tiny little alcoves underneath the ship's, underneath the ship's main area, and you have to climb to the back of the ship just to get into them. Now, I think that people will start building these patterns where they'll do the drop-downs, dropping in once again from the wreck entrance or from the scanning array, seem to be the closest of the two fuse boxes for the drop-downs, but and then hop back out at the wreck to get back up to the pilot seat. But I, I just feel that there's something, there's something off about all this. I wish it was just one relay panel near the back smuggler hold door or near the engineering door, and then you make the choice of having it less safe where you lock the engineering door open or the smuggler door open, and then you can get to it in an emergency quicker, but you do run the risk of somebody sneaking aboard the ship and then getting in there and causing havoc, ripping the relays out, and sneaking up on you or whatever. But that's your decision. Uh, but having them in two separate places in these, in these rather complex areas, if you don't know the ship well, uh, is, is, to say the least, disheartening. I would say that this is not going to be just an isolated thing for the MSR, but it does give us warning signs of the future. If you see ships with different kinds of lower engineering deck areas, this is going to be a problem, and the ship better be worth the, the squeeze in order to make it worth all that extra effort to keep it running when those relays keep failing, especially if it's not an uncommon occurrence. The Liberator is a good example of one that people always forget. The Liberator has an engineering deck that acts as like a crossover point between the crude side, which is on the right side of the ship if you're, if you're looking straight ahead from, you're inside the ship and looking straight ahead. And then on the left side of the ship is the passenger side, so the ferry concept that it has. And then at the base of the ship, underneath the deck, underneath the lower deck, there is a lower, lower deck, I guess you could call it, which is just an engineering hallway with the gravity generator, power plant, some other stuff like that. And I believe that is going to be stocked to the gills with freaking relays if this is the way things are going. That's an example of that ship. Another example in a much larger scale is the Idris. The Idris has a hallway that runs back and forth on the upper and lower decks, and I'm sure they'll find many places to slap relays in these dang hallways. And, and rooms and such in these places, which is a blessing and a curse. Now, the, the, the Liberator and the, the Idris brings so much to the table for what they do, and just like I put it out with the Carrick. Uh, but when we get back to a ship like the MSR, I think it's too much for this class of vessel, especially when I know most of my friends that have them have just fly solo, or at most have a single friend on board and they don't want to be your, your, your wrench tuner 24-7. They certainly didn't sign up to just be an engineer all day. So, and crawl around bright red catacombs of a ship that they don't want to have to memorize. It's not a fun minigame, based on what I'm seeing. I hope I'm surprised. I really do. I really hope that there's something, especially at CitizenCon coming up, that really knocks our socks off with engineering. But, based on what I'm seeing in the 3.24.2 PTU, which is now open to practically everybody, and I'm sure it's going to be open always very soon, um, I, I, I'm, I'm just a little bit hesitant, and I, I stress that you should have a CC ready from your MSR to something else. I'm not saying it has to be the, the fruit of the moment, the exciting new ship, or whatever it is, um, but just keep your options open and keep that CC ready to go. So you don't find yourself when 3.24.2 gets live and 4.0 hits live and such in the near future, you're, you're not going to feel like you've been left out, especially passing IAE. You don't really want to uh, miss out on some upgrade to kind of give yourself an escape path. Not so that expensive, but if you do own one that uh, you purchase with your own money, it's a wise decision to hold that CC though.
And if not, then you just melt it. If you find that the, if they fix the MSR or the relays are nowhere near as big of a deal as I made a 10 minute video about. That's what I got to talk about. I, I wanted to appreciate y'all for sticking around with me on this one. Let me know what your thoughts are below. Um, I do enjoy the discussions and I, I'm always available in other options too. Reddit, uh, Discord, if you want to talk in private. Uh, so yeah. There's a lot of great options from the MSR to CCU from, especially at IAE, where everything is available and there is no such thing as fear of missing out. Um, you can just, to your heart's content, pick something up. And the MSR is at a high enough price point where you can pick something up. And there's quite a few things that are within, uh, you know, 20, 30, 40 M USD range. And then if you don't need that later on, you can just melt it and pick something else up with that credit. You know, just a thought. All right. Thanks again. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend.